It may be hard to imagine, but there was a time when physicians and surgeons didn't know about germs, and they didn't even wash their hands before examining or operating on patients. In 1847, it was discovered that a large number of women were dying of deadly infections shortly after giving birth because their physician's hands were contaminated with something that came from dissecting infected cadavers. Thankfully for their patients, these doctors began washing their hands in chlorinated lime solution. They still didn't know exactly what invisible infectious element they were removing from their hands, but we now know it was bacteria. In the late 1800s, germ theory established the connection between microscopic organisms like bacteria and disease. For a long time, hygiene was thought of as getting rid of bacteria or almost akin to sterilizing the skin. But not all bacteria are germs. Microscopic bacteria, viruses, fungi, and other single-celled organisms called protozoa are collectively called microbes. Germs refer to those microbes that can cause illness or disease. But many microbes are permanent residents on our skin and cause us no harm at all. Some of them even provide us with benefits. Just like the gut microbiome includes friendly gut microbes that are considered part of our healthy digestive tract. Scientists are learning that we have a rich ecosystem of microbes on our skin called the skin microbiome. Why did it take so long to figure this out? For a while, scientists tried to grow microbes from the skin in the laboratory using artificial conditions where only 1% of them can actually grow. This created a limited picture of the microbial populations present on our skin. Thanks to modern DNA sequencing techniques, we are getting a much more complete picture of the whole skin ecosystem. As we learn more about our skin microbiome, scientists, physicians, and society are re-evaluating what good hygiene means for the skin. The skin is the largest organ in the human body. The surface area of the skin is often calculated to be two square meters. However, this calculation does not include all the nooks and crannies where skin microbes live, like inside hair follicles and inside glands that release sweat. Hair follicles are tiny tunnels in the skin where hair grows out from. If the depth and diameter of our 5 million hair follicles are included, as well as sweat glands, the total available skin area that microbes may inhabit is 30 square meters. This is about the same amount of surface as the ground covering two parking spaces. The total number of microorganisms living on us is in the trillions. During and after birth, a baby's skin and gut are colonized by organisms from the mother. Babies born the normal way are colonized by bacteria from the womb and canal. But those born by cesarean section get colonized by microorganisms from the mother's skin. The microbes interact with the baby's immune system and teach it to tolerate certain microbes so that a balanced ecosystem of microorganisms can be established. While gut microbial communities are set around the age of three, skin microbial communities undergo restructuring at puberty. At puberty, certain glands on the skin begin to produce an oily substance called sebum, which feeds and sustains different types of bacteria. Whether new strains of microbes are acquired or whether some just become more abundant is not known. What is known is that these changes bring about new body odors at puberty. More on this later. Microorganisms compete with each other on our skin for space and food. Just like the Earth has different climates and conditions where different plants and animals are adapted to live, the skin has different types of habitats, such as dry forearms, moist armpits, or oily face. The pockets in the skin where hair grows out provide environments rich in resources for fungi and bacteria. The oily substance, called sebum, that gets released around the growing hair has antibacterial properties. But certain bacteria have evolved ways to colonize this area. The composition of microbes at particular sites on the skin are similar between individuals. But the microbes on the same spot on each of your arms would be more similar to each other than the same spot on another person's arm. 
Even though we are constantly washing our skin, applying creams, touching things, and moving to different environments, our dominant types of skin microbes tend to be stable. In addition to single-celled organisms in our skin ecosystem, there are teeny tiny eight-legged creatures related to spiders that prefer the oily areas of our face. By day, they burrow into the bottom of our hair follicles and sleep. Then, when we sleep, it's party time. They crawl on the surface of our skin and mate. These creatures are not party poopers. Really, they actually don't poop. They store their excrement until they die. Then things get weirder. These tiny mites have bacteria living on them that can affect us. When they die, our skin is exposed to the bacteria in their feces, which in some people is thought to cause the condition rosacea, characterized by redness of the face. How about that moist, protected environment in our middle region that sometimes contains a little lint? It turns out that the belly button is kind of like a rainforest in terms of biodiversity. New York State University launched the Belly Button Biodiversity Project in 2011, a citizen science project to investigate the microbes in the belly button. After sampling 60 navels, 2,300 species of microbes were found. Only eight of those species were commonly found in most individuals. The remaining species were rare or even unique to the individual. One person had a type of bacterium known only to be found in soil from Japan, a place where they had never visited. The microbial community that lives on us determines how we smell. Human sweat is odorless. The apocrine glands in the armpit release substances that bacteria feed on. When bacteria grow and when they break down molecules that you excrete in your sweat, they give rise to body odor. Part of what influences which microbes live on you is your genetics, but you can pick up microbes from others that you spend a lot of time with. People that stayed at home during the COVID-19 pandemic noticed changes to their own body odor, and this is thought to be due to changes in their skin microbe populations. Guess what? An armpit microbe transplant is a thing that can be done to make your armpits less smelly. The procedure has been performed by Chris Califit, a microbiologist at the University of California. He is also known as Dr. Armpit. How about stinky feet? Have you ever noticed that feet sometimes smell like cheese? Many bacteria that live on human skin are similar to those used in cheese making. In fact, bacteria sampled from the armpits, ears, noses, and belly buttons of celebrities were used to make cheese at Open Cell, a shared lab space in London. As appetizing as it might sound, people aren't allowed to eat the armpit cheese. The cheese on display at a British museum is meant to change the way we think about microbes. Are they all bad? Why are we both attracted to and repelled by the smell of cheese? How should we feel about the presence of microbes and odors on our body? Our skin picks up microbes from our environment. We also leave microbes behind on things we touch. The microbial community of your fingertips can be found on objects like a phone or computer keyboard. Studying the hand microbiome may lead to a new kind of fingerprinting in the forensic investigation of crime scenes. A study at the International Space Station found that it was possible to tell by looking at microbe samples alone when a new astronaut arrived and left. In the future, it may be possible to predict health problems in the crew ahead of time by detecting changes in microbial populations. The function of skin is to act as a barrier between the body and the outside world. Microorganisms can provide a physical barrier to prevent pathogens from invading. Some strains of Staphylococcus bacteria produce antimicrobials that defend against harmful bacterial strains, and some help wounds heal. Skin dysbiosis is an imbalance in the skin microbial community. Skin dysbiosis is linked to skin disorders such as eczema and psoriasis that involve inflammation, which is an immune system overreaction. It is not yet known if these disorders cause dysbiosis or the other way around. 
scientists are actively trying to find out how the immune system tells the difference between harmless resident microbes and pathogenic microbes and what may cause the immune system to overreact. Acne is associated with a certain type of bacteria that lives on the skin of almost all adults. It could be that some people secrete more sebum, creating a more favorable environment for this bacteria. Some strains of acne bacteria produce more of a substance called porphyrin, which can trigger redness and swelling. The bacteria may also increase their production of porphyrin when a person takes vitamin B12 supplements. Knowing which microbes are a normal and healthy part of our skin microbiome could lead to treatments to target specific ecosystem imbalances. Microbes themselves can be the medicine. For example, phages are viruses that prey on bacteria and are thought to shape the populations of bacteria on your skin. Biomex is a company based in Israel that's developing a phage-based product that targets the bacteria linked to acne. Pharasides Pharma, a company based in France, is using phages to target the skin bacteria involved in diabetic foot ulcer infections. An American company is developing a strain of live bacteria to treat eczema. This company also invented a bacteria spray that contains live bacteria found in dirt and untreated water that is meant to restore balance in the skin ecosystem. Whether you think it's icky or amazing that our skin provides habitats for bacteria to eat sweat and battle with viruses and for mites to party all night, there is no denying that they are part of us. We are only beginning to learn how our microbes take care of us and how we can take care of them.